After you've refinanced the house and made a trip to the hardware store, or in my case about five trips to get your lumber and supplies, you're going to start with a couple 2x3s and some 3 quarter inch plywood for the bottom section. All the 2x3s will get pocket holes on both ends. For the longer 2x3s, I set my pocket hole jig for 3 quarter inch, since it will be connected to a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. And for the smaller 2x3s, I set the pocket hole jig for an inch and a half. I then set the side panel plywood on its side and attached one of the long 2x3s with glue and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. The pocket hole clamp came in very handy for doing this part. And next I attached the other side panel to the other side of that same 2x3. Then I flipped those panels and attached the other long 2x3. For the smaller 2x3 boards, I used 2.5 inch pocket screws. Next, I poured on some glue and brad nailed the bottom plywood in place. I do hope you got a good rate on that refi. Let's get some of that precious lumber and attach the dividers. All of the three inch wide strips of plywood will get pocket holes on both ends and the divider panels will get two pocket holes on the bottom. Here I use the 20 inch support cross pieces as a spacer and a square clamp jig to hold the divider panel in place. You may want to recruit some extra hands for this part. I'm not a financial planner, but I hope you didn't get an adjustable rate mortgage to pay for these adjustable shelves. Even though these shelves will be painted, the use of edge banding on the front facing edge of each shelf will make for a much cleaner paint finish. To apply the banding, line it up flush to one side and then tape the outer ends down with painter's tape. After ironing the middle, remove the tape and then iron the outer ends. Now you can remove the excess banding with a razor blade and then use a file and sandpaper for a smooth finish. For the adjustable shelves, I used a Craig shelf pin jig and it worked out great. Also, using a clamp really helps to make cleaner holes. Make sure to stagger the pin holes in the middle divider panels. When measuring for the face frame, make sure to take into account the thickness of the side trim pieces. I went ahead and clamped a scrap piece of trim, then measured. Then measure the height for the top and bottom boards. You'll use one by sixes and rip them down to size. Now you can clamp the top and bottom boards in place to get the measurements for the vertical one by three boards. Pocket holes will go into both ends of each of the vertical boards. And now you're ready to glue and fasten the frame together with pocket hole screws.
Finally, splatter on some wood glue and clamp it in place, and then pop in some brad nails. Almost all the pocket holes are hidden in this project, except for the ones on the divider panels. You can fill these in with wood filler, which I've done before and it's worked great, but I chose to hammer in a 5 8 inch dowel and cut it with a flush trim saw, and that worked pretty good. I don't have a jointer, so I use the table saw to clean up the edges of these boards to make good edges for gluing. You'll need to trim off about a quarter inch to square off the edges. Next, plot out where to drill pocket holes. Every nine inches space them out almost perfect for me. You only need to drill pocket holes in the middle board and the back board. And now you're ready to glue, clamp, and fasten your top together. For sanding the top, I like to use the scribble technique. Scribble pencil all over the top and then sand it off, starting with a 60 or 80 grit sandpaper. If there are any dips with pencil still showing after a few passes, then scribble again until it all sands off smooth. Then you'll repeat the same step with a 120 grit and finally a 220 grit sandpaper. I really like the look of a chamfered edge on the top. Now you can pop in an 8 inch router bit and your router fence to router out slots in the top for the Z-clip fasteners. I'll show you the Z-clips when we are ready to attach the top. I decided to install the barn door hardware before making the doors in order to get a good measurement for the doors. This is a five and a half foot mini barn door hardware kit I found on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. I did crack down and read the directions because there was a lot of parts, but it was pretty easy to figure out. The doors will measure two inches taller and two inches wider than the side openings of the face frame in order to have a one inch overhang on all sides. For the trim, I decided to start with the vertical pieces. And for all the trim pieces, it's a good idea to err on the side of too big and then trim down to, well, trim down the trim to fit. After building the door, you can line it up, pre-drill and fasten it in place. For the side trim, I used more of the same two and a half inch by half inch trim for the vertical pieces. Then to match the front face frame, I ripped a five inch trim piece down to four inches for the top and three and a half inches for the bottom. For the bottom trim, I found some three inch trim I liked and I ripped it down to two inches wide. There needs to be three quarters of an inch gap between the bottom of the doors and the bottom trim for the door brackets that uh, will be installed later. Now you're ready to prep for paint. If you're a rookie woodworker like me, wood filler can make you look like you know what you're doing. Now you get to turn your shop into a paint studio for the next few days. For paint, I used an off-white bare paint and primer in one. I applied three coats with a brush and a small foam roller. Make sure to sand any rough spots with a 220 grit between coats of paint. To keep this buffet looking good for a long time, I decided to go above and beyond and apply three coats of a water-based polyurethane. 
After pre-staining the top, I stained it and then realized I made a big mistake. There was a crack on the top I filled in with super glue and then I didn't sand it off well. To fix it, I sanded the whole top, paying a little bit more attention to the glue, and then restained. And luckily, it came out great. After staining the top for the second time, I added three coats of an oil-based polyurethane, sanding between each coat. To attach the top, I pre-drilled and fastened the Z-clips with one and a quarter inch wood screws. The barn door hardware comes with these little felt line brackets to keep the door from swaying. And finally, it's time to attach the wainscoting to the back using three quarter inch wood screws.